Here now with how he's playing energy and the rest of it is Bill Smead, Chief Investment Officer at Smead Capital Management. Welcome back, Bill. Good to see you. Yeah, good, good to be with you. I worry about energy because it, it's done so well and oil prices have kind of dropped off at year end. And, and Ed Morris now has me thinking, you know, maybe he's right and, and it's going to be kind of a, a grind next year. So why should I own these energy stocks? Well, first off, they started from a 246-year low in uh, the middle of 2020 uh, uh, versus stock prices. Uh, oil and other commodities were the cheapest relative to stocks in 246 years. Uh, historical mean reversions like that take 10 to 12 years. So a, a hint from Ed is, yes, we, we're in them for the next 10 years, and there'll be a few correction years in the process, and that might be this next year if there's a deep recession. But the truth of it is, it's a better business to be in right now. If you own the entire company of Occidental Petroleum, you're getting 41% cash flow to book value or return on your book value. That's that's way better than any any time in, in, in decades for yeah. this industry. And you think, so how long, let's put it this way, all of this is happening against the backdrop of a world that is trying to get away from fossil fuels, and there's political pressure to do so, and there's divestment. And obviously, we saw with tobacco stocks la last decade, they could still turn in pretty strong performance. Should we expect a rerun of that? Should we expect this performance, sort of, let's call it double-digit annual returns, to persist even as the world turns into an electrified world? Well, first of all, they're a tiny part of the S&P 500 index. They're only about four, four and a half percent of the index. Uh, they peaked in 1981 at 29.74. Ironically, almost the same peak that the Fangs had about a year to year and a half ago. So, so what we know is the transition away from fossil fuels is going to last decades, not years. And Warren Buffett was the first one to say that a year ago, May, when and he owns the largest energy utility. In, in the United States of America and and is spending $3.9 billion to build wind and solar farms in Iowa. So when he's buying Oxy and Chevron, he's looking and he's saying, hey, these are priced to last five years or 10 years, and their profitability is likely to last 30 years. Because remember, it's one of the ways of making electricity. There's only four ways to make le uh, electricity right now that, that are viable and that's wind, solar, natural gas, and putting gasoline into turbines, which is what they do in California when they have brownouts. They just don't mention that. Right. So at the case for energy being what it is that you foresee, where would it rank in terms of your best ideas? And I know you like stocks better than sectors, and, and but we are, are often talking about these big, broad, thematic themes. Um, I can't imagine you're that optimistic about what's going to happen with the economy next year. I know we like the consumer story long term, but maybe not so much in the near term.